Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. If you've watched this show over the past few months, you know that we have fixated, sometimes to the exclusion of other important things, on the riots and disorder that have paralyzed many American cities. We haven't done this for partisan reasons, honestly. It is a presidential year, but the threat that we're facing is deeper and more significant than any single election. Political violence is the greatest threat we face. It is more dangerous than any virus or any foreign adversary. It could literally end this country. We've told you who's responsible for the violence. We didn't need to tell you. You knew it. It's obvious, no matter what the professional liars are now claiming on television. The main suspect, for example, in the most recent political assassination in Portland has a BLM logo tattooed on his neck. He's not hiding what team he's on. None of them are. Every honest person watching understands exactly what is going on in our streets. What too few understand, though, is why it's happening. Why would kids raised in the fairest country in the world support a violent revolutionary group like BLM, whose program consists mainly of destroying things? Why would educated adults, the very people who should be defending our system, whom we need to defend our system, be working so hard to tear it down? Historians will inevitably study these questions. They're going to want to know what happened here. They'll conclude that ideology played a major role in all of this. For a generation, Americans have been taught to accept the underlying premises that made BLM possible. Human beings can be reduced to their race. Skin color equals privilege. Equality under the law must be abandoned. These are lies, but suddenly they're everywhere. Americans have learned them in school, learned them on the job, heard them even in church. Without these ideas, we wouldn't have riots right now. We wouldn't put up with them for a second. So where is this poison coming from? Well, ultimately, it comes from the academic left, which controls this country's intellectual life, such as it is. But the product they're selling has been disseminated widely by the media, by corporate HR departments, even by the federal government, which you pay for, all of us do. The problem is larger than most people understand, larger, in fact, than we understood until we read the reporting of a man called Chris Rufo. Rufo has spent months investigating critical race theory indoctrination, the mandatory Maoist struggle sessions that are now underway in your office and in your kid's school. Highly paid diversity trainers systematically attack the unifying ideals of this country. They pit Americans against each other based on the color of their skin. It is a grotesque project. It is wrong. It is openly racist. Over time, it leads to violence and permanent division. We're seeing it now. It is terrifying. But virtually no one challenges it. We should challenge it for the sake of our country. So tonight we've asked Chris Rufo to walk us through some of what is happening here. You should know the details. Rufo is a research fellow at the Discovery Institute as well as a contributing editor at City Journal, and he joins us now. Chris Rufo, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. You know, Tucker, this is something I've been investigating for the last six months, and it's absolutely astonishing how critical race theory has pervaded every institution in the federal government. And what I've discovered is that critical race theory has become, in essence, the default ideology of the federal bureaucracy and is now being weaponized against the American people. I'd like to share three investigations that I've unleashed uh, that show the kind of depth of this critical race theory, occult indoctrination, uh, and the danger and destruction it can wreak. Uh, first, the Treasury Department. Uh, I broke the story on the Treasury Department, which held uh, a, a seminar uh, earlier this year uh, from a man named Howard Ross, uh, a diversity trainer who has billed the federal government more than $5 million over the past 15 years, uh, conducting seminars on critical race theory. Uh, and he told Treasury employees essentially that America was a fundamentally a white supremacist country, and I quote, virtually all white people uphold the system of racism and white superiority, and was essentially denouncing the country and asking white employees at the Treasury Department and affiliated organizations uh, to accept their white privilege, uh, accept uh, their white uh, racial superiority, uh, and accept uh, essentially uh, all of the uh, baggage that comes uh, with this reducible essence of whiteness. 
Uh, second, uh, this is not by any means limited to the Treasury Department. Critical race theory has actually uh, now infiltrated uh, our criminal justice system. Uh, just this week, I released a story that the FBI is now holding weekly seminars on intersectionality, uh, which is a hard left academic theory uh, that reduces people to a network of racial, gender, and sexual orientation identities uh, that intersect in complex ways and determine whether you are an oppressor or oppressed. Uh, obviously, with the white straight male, such as FBI Director Christopher Wray, uh, being at the top of this pyramid of evil. And third, this is a major story, uh, critical race theory is now uh, infiltrating into our scientific establishment. Uh, a few weeks ago, I released a story uh, that critical race theorists uh, at the Sandia National Laboratories, uh, which creates our nuclear weapons arsenal, uh, sent their white male executives on a three-day re-education camp. Uh, to deconstruct their white male culture uh, and actually force them to write letters of apology uh, to women and people of color. Uh, whistleblowers within Sandia National Laboratories have now spoken out, uh, but laboratory executives have dispatched counterintelligence teams uh, to quickly erase their communications, uh, silence and shut them down. And this is really the bottom line. Uh, there are some great people in D.C., such as Senator Josh Hawley in Missouri, that are starting to push back. But conservatives need to wake up that this is an existential threat to the United States. And the bureaucracy, even under the Trump administration, is now being weaponized against core traditional American values. And I'd like to make it explicit. Uh, the president of the White House, it's within their authority and power to immediately issue an executive order abolishing critical race theory trainings from the federal government. And I call on the president uh, to immediately issue this executive order and, and stamp out this destructive, divisive, pseudoscientific ideology at its root. Uh, and I think that it's something that he's denounced, uh, this kind of Black Lives Matter and neo-Marxist rhetoric in places like Portland and Seattle. Uh, but it's time to take action and destroy it within his own administration. The consequences of what you described are, are profound. I think we're seeing some of them now on our streets. But I want to get to the second example because it, it may be the most troubling of all, the Department of Justice. So the underlying idea behind our entire justice system is that all of us are treated equally under the laws of the United States. Your race, your gender, who you sleep with are irrelevant in the eyes of the law. How could the FBI which is armed and empowered to uphold those laws, be disseminating lies like this, which are exactly contrary to their mission. I mean, how corrosive is that? How scary is that? It's extremely corrosive, and what we're seeing is that the institutions of the federal government, the actual bureaucracies and agencies and this kind of permanent administrative state, has really abandoned the core American principles of equality under the law, of judging individuals as individuals on their merits, and they're now adapting this radical left ideology of judging people from their group identity, uh, and it's absolutely terrifying that the FBI, which has uh, all, almost kind of plenary uh, physical authority in the United States, uh, would be adapting this ideology, and I think it's a red alert moment, and all Americans should be deeply uh, worried about their country. They, they should be. This has nothing to do with this election, and it has to do with our future as a nation. Very quickly, there are reports that this is going on in the United States military. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I've had some uh, leaks from inside the U.S. military, uh, in the Air Force, in the Navy. Uh, I'm still working on these stories to source them, to confirm them. Uh, but what I can say is this, is that they are essentially starting in 2011 with an Obama executive order uh, mandating diversity and inclusion initiatives throughout the federal government. Uh, they've created these offices of diversity and inclusion who ostensibly are supporting uh, greater diversity. But in practice, according to sources throughout the federal government, uh, serve as almost Almost internal intelligence services uh, to perpetuate this ideology and to root out conservative ideas and ultimately purge conservative employees. A diverse country can't, can't handle this for long. We need to be unified by our equality under the law or we won't be unified. And by the way, if there are people watching us who've experienced it, I hope you'll reach out to us whistleblowers within the military or other federal agencies. We'll reach out to Chris Rufo or to us because we're going to keep on this story. Chris Rufo, thanks so much for your report tonight. I appreciate it. So we have more bad news for you. The president apparently is still stealing mailboxes across the country. Democrats are convinced that's happening. They're close to cracking the case. By the way, they're also completely sure that there's no risk whatsoever of nationwide mail-in balloting. 
They say that's a conspiracy theory. But now, a Democratic Party operative anonymously has made a confession. Our own Rick Leventhal has details on that revealing story. Rick? Well, Tucker, as you said, Democrats have consistently dismissed concerns about mail-in ballot fraud as a myth or overblown. But a New York Post reporter says the truth is chilling, that abuse is easy and widespread. Interviewing a Democratic operative who claims he's been fixing or manipulating mail-in ballots in multiple states for decades. The operative spoke on condition of anonymity, fearing prosecution, he said, calling himself a master at fixing ballots. Telling the Post some methods are really simple, like sending a team into a neighborhood after ballots are mailed out and then knock on the doors and convince people to hand them over. The operative claims a shocking number of people actually do that and then they can just throw out the ballots cast for the other side. He says postal workers are sometimes in on the scam, tossing loads of ballots from areas known as Republican strongholds. Another method allegedly targets nursing homes. This has been called granny harvesting in the past, you know, and they, they don't even have to steam it open because the nurse is on the payroll. And then they just go and the nurse gives a stack of ballots that, you know, it's like, hello, we're going to do the ballot together. And um, and 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 then and then, you know, that it's 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 both both fraud and it's elder abuse, frankly. Well, the source says he and his operatives did their dirty work in local, state and federal elections in New Jersey, New York and Pennsylvania, which, of course, is a key swing state in the upcoming election. Tucker. What a story. Rick Leventhal, thank you for that so much. Sure.